Hi students, I've received several uh, questions this week about the discrete probability distributions. I uh, hope I haven't spammed you with a lot of videos, but uh, this one is about Poisson distributions, and I hope it'll answer some of your questions because I'm going to do uh, an example of that. Now, the first thing you want to realize is that the Poissons are a little different than um, our uh, binomials and hypergeometrics uh, because this one is all about decay. I should have written the formula for the Poisson on here, but um, what the Poisson basically says is that we might have an influx at first or we have a, a value at first and then it's going to decay from there over time. For example, you may say, well, I could have an infinite number of customers. Well, if customers is your x value, for example, x equals a count of customers, you could have an infinite number, but there's not an infinite number of people in the world, so, you know, I don't think we could assume an infinite number of people are going to come into your store. So it's going to get, you know, closer and closer to a probability if we say I should have labeled this axis here. If this axis is the probability uh, of x, oops, then that probability is going to decay over, you know, it's going to get lower and lower and lower that you're going to get a bajillion million people, right? Okay, but so put Poisson describes the probability that x will occur, and it assumes the decay over time. So you have e, that natural log, raised to a negative power, and that's what makes it decay. Okay, now, um, let's talk about an example. You were interested in an, in an example, and I started this once, and, and my uh, video crashed, so I've already marked up a couple things here. Bird watchers notice that cardinals, four cardinals, visit a feeder each minute. And you see I've already labeled and highlighted. And hopefully you're doing the same thing, whether you're writing this down on a separate piece of paper or whether you're, um, you know, printing it and marking up the problem. When we say there are four cardinals that visit each minute, uh, what we're really saying is that this is the average. And you know that the average is, is mu. I could write the Greek symbol there, but mu, okay? Now, I've also highlighted each minute because the units of time must be standardized. In other words, if I, in one case, talk about that the average is four cardinals per minute, and then later on I'm interested in how many cardinals per day, I need to standardize on either days or minutes. How do you choose? Well, you read the question and you uh, kind of key in on what the question is asking. Is the question saying the probability in terms of days or the probability in terms of minutes? So the key is in the question. Now, in this question, just like the ones that you were working, they didn't pull that trick on you. I didn't pull that trick on you. Um, I'm constantly asking about minutes, okay? So we're standardized on that unit of time and we know mu. Now, the first question says, what is the probability that exactly four birds? Now, very important thing, we're not talking about the probability of four or less, nor are we talking about the probability of four or more. We want to know the probability that exactly four birds will come to that feeder. Well, we're counting the birds, so that is our x value. That's our random variable. We don't know if it's going to be zero birds or ten birds, but what we're kind of betting on in terms of probability is that it will be exactly four, and, and notice the unit of measure, in a minute. Okay, there is a chart in the Appendix B of your book that you can use for this. There is a formula in your book. Your calculator has uh, probably buttons to do this, but you know that I use the big handy dandy Excel calculator to do that. And of course, that's what I'm going to use here. But if I can interrupt myself for a brief commercial message, okay, you want this commercial, you want to take the time to come into pause and look at the extra credit assignment that will walk you through an exam using Excel. Okay, now, I know you see all these reminders on the side. Yeah, they're great and all, but don't use those for this. Come over here to these links across the top and click on Dropbox. If you would, just do me that favor. As you scroll down and you look at the extra credit assignment, I tell you a mistake that many students make. Most students will click directly on this supplemental file that you need to solve the problem. Well, that's great and all, but it's not the instructions. The instructions can be found by clicking on the name. 
So you know to click on the name and that brings you back into these instructions. You can watch the video, click that link, right? You've got all the resources that you need. Okay, so now let's go back to our example. I've marked it up a so let me start with a fresh slate. It says bird watchers notice that four cardinals, right, visit the feeder each minute. So if this is what they've kind of noticed typically, or we would say on average, then we have a big clue here because this would be our mu value, right? Now in a Poisson, we only need two variable values. One is mu and one is our x value. But one of the keys to um, our Poisson distribution is making sure that at, that we standardize on what the unit of time is. So um, if we have some things in hours and some things in minutes and some things in days, we need to make sure that we standardize on just one unit of time. What value we, you, what unit of time we standardize on depends on what the question is. If the question asks us about minutes, we need to standardize on minutes. If the question asks us about days, we standardize on days. So we have to look for that key in the question itself. Oh, wait. Bird watchers notice four cardinals visit each minute, so we know that. Assume the distribution of birds per minute can be approximated by a Poisson, so we're given that. Well. Oh, and I see I've already given you some answers here. I need to start with a fresh uh, slate. It says calculate the probability that, now here's the key, exactly four birds, right? No more, no less. Not three birds, not two birds, not six birds, not four birds, or not five birds, but four birds, exactly four. We're counting the birds. We don't know how many birds. It's a random value. It's our random variable, in other words, x is going to equal 4. Now I've got to double check the time. Yep, it's in minutes. Our average is in minutes. The question is about minutes. So we're looking at four cardinals uh, on average and what's the probability that there's going to be four. Now, you have a chart in Appendix B of your book that you can use. You have a formula in your book and I've given you the two variables. Plug and chug into that formula. You have a calculator that probably has a function for a Poisson, but you know that the calculator that I use is Excel. So I'm going to come over here and actually I've already done, I got to let me start with a clean slate here. Um, I did this once and, and my video recorder crashed, so I'm going through it a second time here. But in Excel, the way that you get help on how to do stuff is you come up here, see this little scripty F? F means function and a function of X, and that's what we're trying to do because X is our random variable. I click that and I tell it I am trying to do a Poisson. And it says, well, think about these. So I'm going to pick this first one. Remember the extra credit tells you about this also. And in the first question, I've already identified that 4 is the random variable and that 4 is the average. Well, what about this cumulative? As long as we are in chapter 6, the answer to cumulative is going to be false because we are only talking about a very defined set of numbers. If we were saying all the numbers between 0 and 4, that's an infinite set of numbers. We're not talking about that. We're saying the discrete values are 0 birds, 1 bird, 2 bird, 3 bird, 4 bird, right? So it is not cumulative. It is discrete. We're going to put false. Simple as that. The probability that exactly four birds will show up to our bird feeder, given that, on, or red birds, I should say, uh, given that on average four cardinals show up to our feeder, is rounded to three decimal places, 0.195, right? Okay, so now we know the answer to part one. 0.195 is the probability that exactly four birds will show up to our feeder given that on average four uh, cardinals we're talking about show up each minute. Now let's go on to parts B and C. The neat thing as we go on to parts B and C are that the, is that the process is the same. We have to identify mu and we've done that. 
Now we have to identify our x value for this part b. And the question is, what is the probability that absolutely no birds, and when I say this, I, I really have done you an injustice here, I apologize. I mean no cardinals will visit the feeder in, and the unit of time is a minute. That's great for us because our average is also in minutes, so we're standardized in our units here. Well, when they say absolutely none, sometimes this throws us because we're looking for numbers. We get so used to a problem solving and finding numbers in the problem. Well, if we say no cardinals, then of course we're saying that x is equal to zero. You know, that may sound like, oh goodness, she's really just going into the minutia here. But let me tell you, this is the stuff that hangs students up, is not taking two seconds to print this page or write that down. You know, uh, what I commonly do is print the problems and then mark on them uh, as I'm working on them. That, that uh, is a little more convenient. But if you don't want to print from your computer as you're solving the problems, just write down on your uh, paper, very organized, very neat fashion x equals 0, mu equals 4, right? Now, I need to come back over to Excel, and I'm going to do that Poisson distribution formula again. Now, let me remind you again, you have a table in the back of your book. You have a formula in your book, and I've given you now the two variables to put into that formula. You have a calculator that probably has this function, and all the computers on our campus have Excel, and so you can use Excel you can click on this f of x function. Look, it already remembers that the last time I was here, I used the Poisson function, so I'm going to use it again. This time we said x is 0, mu is 4, and remember, as long as we're in chapter 6, changes in chapter 7, that's going to be false because we're working with discrete values. So the probability that 0 cardinals will show up is 0 0.018, and that's because Connect typically on these problems ask us to round it to three decimals. That's a low probability, isn't it? Less than 2%. Okay, now I'm going to label these because I've been preaching about the, uh, you know, uh, value of labeling, and this was for um, x equals 4, and this was for x equals 0, and now I'm going to look at the next part of the problem. Uh, should I retype that answer, 0 0.018? Okay, so the answer here, uh, 0 0.018. Okay, is what is the probability that, uh-oh, got to be careful here, one or fewer. One or fewer birds will visit the feeder in a minute. Well, minute is good, but what is one or fewer? Well, one or fewer means that we have to calculate the value for x equals 1 and also x equals 0. In other words, all the discrete values that are 1 or fewer. And so that would be these two values. Once we calculate those two probabilities, we add them up. And that's the answer. Okay, so let's go back over here. And I'm going to calculate the probability for x equals 1. And these are just labels I'm putting in there so you remember. Well, click the f of x, or use your calculator, or use the formula. Here's Poisson. I choose to use Excel. x equals 1, the mean equals 4, cumulative, since we are working with discrete values, is false. There we go. Rounded to three decimal places. There we go. Okay, now, I'm just going to create some space because I don't want you to get confused here. Because for part C of the problem, it requires that I sum these two probabilities. That's the answer. So, 0 0.091. Now, notice that I've rounded, and I just want to double check this. Okay, if you had did not round you might have come up with a different answer. And sometimes on a test, that's just enough difference for you to be marked wrong. Okay, so make sure you take the trouble to retype those numbers, even if your calculator or your Excel oops, is only displaying, you know, a couple numbers. Okay, so I hope that helps. If not, you know, ask the questions. You're doing a great job, and just keep up the good work, okay?